catch fire and brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
And defense lawyers also say prosecutors gave a jailhouse snitch who testified against Anderson a sweetheart deal. In a letter we first showed you last week, District Attorney Leon Canizaro called the informant a hero. This case was uh, essentially a two-witness case, an eyewitness and a jailhouse informant. And there was critical evidence that was not turned over to the defense that could have been used to cross-examine both of those witnesses. A spokesperson for the DA's office says everything was handled above board and the conviction is solid. The 2006 killings prompted then-Governor Kathleen Blanco to call the National Guard back to the city to patrol. With the police department under several federal investigations for post-Katrina shootings, legal analysts say overturning a high-profile conviction is the last thing the DA needs. This, this conviction is vacated tomorrow. It's going to be a result of uh, essentially prosecutorial misconduct. In March of 2011, Mike Mike pleaded guilty to federal drugs, murder, and racketeering conspiracy charges stemming from a federal probe of the Josephine Dog Pound Gang. Mike Mike was one of the eight gang members charged in the case and was the last to be sentenced. Special Agent Mike Eberhardt of the ATF, who led the federal probe of the Josephine Dog Pound Gang, stated investigators posted violent crimes on a map of the city and noticed the high rate of violent crimes happening in the Josephine neighborhood. Neighborhood. Went on to say that the Josephine Dog Pound was among the most violent gangs in the city, terrorizing the neighborhoods around them. The ATF would build their case by immersing themselves in the neighborhood, knocking on residents' doors and making it obvious that they were watching the dudes off. Josephine. On July 12th of 2005, Mike Mike Jack Ronnie at gunpoint and was arrested a day later after Ronnie went to them dicks. While Mike Mike was locked up, he spoke to Ronnie over the phone, threatening him to recant his story and drop the charges. A different dude off the Joes would be accused of fatally shooting Ronnie outside of his home on July 14th of 2005. Michael Anderson, aka Mike Mike, Harold Jones, aka Duty, Theron Jones, aka TJ, Jeremiah Milrow, aka Jerry, Corey Oliver, Daryl Shields, aka Snook, Jerome Simmons, aka Buddy, and Tony Simmons, aka Yayo, would all be indicted for their involvement in a racketeering enterprise. The indictment will read that all were members of the organization known as the Dog Pound Gangsters and engaged in, among other things, conspiracy to distribute controlled substances, distribution of controlled substances, murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and attempted murder. Shortly before 3.40 p.m. on September 4th of 2006, Corey, Snook, and TJ were riding together in the whip when they passed the scatter sites located at 1828 Washington Avenue. It was spot their op and other men who were affiliated with a rival clique. As they slid through, a short confrontation would take place between the ops, Corey, Snook, and TJ. All three men would go back to the hood and jump on pedal bikes, riding back to the scatter sites on Washington Avenue to confront their ops. Snook was strapped with a nine at the time. When the ops saw them approaching the scatter sites for a second time, he knew it was about to go down. The ops started busting at them with his 38 caliber. Snook started to hit back with the 9 chasing dude, ultimately hitting him in the leg and deleting an innocent bystander. During all of the commotion, Corey would drop his cell phone on drives, which would later be recovered by the N.O.P. D. Corey Oliver will plead guilty to participating in a RICO with conspiracy to distribute 280 grams or more of that hard 11.5 and that green and was sentenced to 20 years of imprisonment. Theron Jones, aka TJ, will plead guilty to using a firearm during a violent crime, drug and guns conspiracies, and racketeering. Harold Jones, aka Duty, will plead guilty to participating in a RICO with conspiracy to distribute 280 grams or more of that hard 11.5 and that green. Duty would also plead guilty to using and carrying a firearm and in retaliation to a crime of violence, as well as a trafficking crime that caused the death of Elwood Pleasant on March 23rd of 2004, was sentenced to 30 years of imprisonment. Tony Simmons, aka Yayo, will plead guilty to participating in the RICO with conspiracy to distribute 280 grams or more of that hard 11.5 and that green. Yayo would also plead guilty to causing death through the use of a firearm for the murder of Ronnie Mead on July 14th of 2005, as well as being a felon in possession of a firearm and was sentenced to 30 years of in imprisonment.
Jerome Simmons will plead guilty to assault with a deadly weapon in aid of racketeering and was sentenced to 15 years. Jeremiah Milro, aka Jerry, was sentenced to 25 years in federal prison after pleading guilty to using a firearm during a crime that caused the death of Elwood Pleasant. Daryl Shields, a.k.a. Snook, was sentenced to life imprisonment by U.S. District Court Judge Martin L. C. Feldman. Snook pled guilty to count 1, 2, 6, and 12 of the federal superseding indictment, which called for a term of life imprisonment. Count 1 charged Snook for participating in a racketeer influence and corrupt organization, a.k.a. RICO conspiracy. Count 2 charged Snook with conspiracy to distribute 280 grams or more of that hard, 11.5, and that Green. Count 6 charged Snook with murder in aid of racketeering pertaining to the death of Ronnie Meade. Count 12 charged Snook with murder in aid of racketeering pertaining to the death of Herbert Lane. Michael Anderson, a.k.a. Mike Mike, would be the last person sentenced to death by an Orleans Parish jury. However, that would not last long as he is now scheduled for release from prison thanks to a steep reduction in his sentence that a federal judge will grant him for lying on Telly Hankton, a.k.a. Wow, a.k.a. Third. Michael Mike Mike Anderson had already seen his death sentence reduced to life while in federal prison. But now, as of current times, he's due to be released in July of 2025, a recent change that the Federal Bureau of Prisons will confirm as fact, not rumor. Mike Mike will be free at the age of 38. This with the story of the Josephine Dog Pound Gangsters.